So this little short video is going to be talking about Labradorite and what people refer to as unidirectional or bidirectional material. And before you cut your Labradorite, you should consider what type of jewelry you're going to make. If you want to make a bolo tie or a necklace pendant type of thing or maybe earrings, you want the the um, refraction to show when the piece is held vertical like this little piece right here you want it so that oops there we go when it's up at an angle like on somebody's chest or whatever you see the color reflection if you put it flat you're not going to get any color so like this would not be good for a, a bracelet or a ring or something like that and I considered that before I cut it. Here's another piece cut the same way. See when it's vertical, the, the color just goes alive. Now these little guys, they are cut more so that when they're flat, the color shows up very well. And if it were up on a, as a pendant, you don't see anything. So this would be good ring material or a bracelet material. And this last piece is kind of in between. You see some color when it's vertical. Let's see if I can get the right angle here. There. But it also shows some color when it's flat. So like this area probably would be okay for a bracelet. And what's this last piece here? There it is. Nice big crystal of blue. Now the other thing about these is there's crystal goes all the way through and you flip it 180 degrees, you will see the color on the other side. If you turn it the other way, you don't see anything. It needs to be 180 degree flip. Anyway, that's a, a short description of thinking about your stone before you put it in the vise and cut it. What are you going to make with it when you're done with it? In this video, we're going to talk about refractive obsidian and orientation. Um, here's a piece of okay grade rainbow obsidian, but you got to get it just the right angle to catch all the right color in the other direction and it doesn't really show. So you, you really want to align it well before you put it in the saw. There's some other stuff such as this is silver sheen obsidian and to think about it if you wanted stripes you would cut it across the stripes this way. However if you wanted it more like a target then you would cut it parallel to the stripes and as you domed it you would see the the target like pattern in the stone so that's something to consider as well and occasionally you know i mean in this case you can see the the silver sheen quite well and sometimes not very often there might be a little bit of of um rainbow obsidian in there and something else to consider is, depending on the angle of your cut, if you just cut this straight down, it would just be all stripes. But if you tilted it slightly, the stripes would actually get thicker. And that's something to consider when you're doing your rainbow as well, is the angle, if you do it parallel or perpendicular, vertical, in this case, you would just have the stripes that are on the same as the outside here. But if you, if you tilted it, then the stripes would be thicker cutting across that way. I think this is another piece of rainbow. Same kind of concept. You can either cut it parallel for a target or all of one color if you're searching. Like I see some potential blue down here. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera or not. But if you cut it across the stripes, you could get potentially a... Um, an all blue or an all pink cab 
as opposed to having the, the typical rainbow effect. Uh, let's see what else we have here. This one is more rainbow. I believe this is from Mexico based on the coloring. And uh, I haven't cut it yet, but there's definitely some pink and green running through there, which is very typical in the Mexican rainbow obsidians. It's another smaller piece. This one would be challenging to cut because of the, the strange angle. I'd have to work on this one to see if I could get it to show up. This is almost, I guess they would call this Aurora Borealis because it has a, a muted look. Um, I guess they could also call it uh, Velvet Rainbow Obsidian. This stuff back here is actually not a sheen, it's just Snowflake happened to be sitting, sitting out on the counter. Um, next we have... People would consider this um, gold sheen. If you catch the angle just right, you'll get some gold fleck in here. However, I would be more inclined to cut it across the grain because this has some excellent double flow patterns running through it. And you would get some amazing cabochons in here instead of trying to get the, the gold sheen, which you can find a lot of. In fact, this little guy is just full of gold sheen. I don't know if you can see it, but just, I mean, I would definitely cut it this way and get all kinds of, of pattern out of it. I've actually done some cutting. There you can see some of the gold sheen in the pattern on this side. This guy might be considered um, I just went blank. <laughs> Fire obsidian, excuse me. Um, it's got some some areas that look like it might be sheen and it's you know it's got some gold pattern to it. Um, and this side has some amazing pattern to it as well. So I'd be more inclined to consider this. Uh, gold sheen obsidian instead of fire obsidian, but there's some areas down here which are very interesting to look at And I saved the best for last. This is definitely um, Fire obsidian and I'm hoping that the little fire shows up down in this area because you can just see it's like a, a Rainbow of color in there and there's multiple layers which is why I haven't cut this yet because I need to try and figure out how to get those out of there. And the layer is micro thin. It's like only, um, if you go too far, you've gone right through it. So you have to be very, very careful. And, uh, and again, that's why I haven't dug into this, but this one definitely has the colors of the rainbow in it. And uh, that, that stuff is hard to find. It's pretty rare. Anyway, that's it for uh, some obsidians and sheens and thoughts to consider before you cut the stone and uh, orientation, you know, again, are you making a pendant or a bracelet? And if so, then, how, you know, how, how are you going to orient the stone? If you, if you um, cut it one way, yeah, you might see a little bit, but if you cut it another way, you're going to see a lot more. And so it just depends on what you plan to do with it when you're done with it. And you should consider that when cutting your stones. You know, this one's a prime example. Do I want targets or do I want stripes? Well, personally, I'd go for the targets. Okay.